So here's why I think that Starlink cutting off Zimbabwean subscribers is actually a good thing. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Master Zimtech Guy. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do eventually end up liking the video, please hit the thumbs up button. So let's talk about Starlink, guys. It's been the talk of the town, Starlink, particularly in this month of April. So Starlink users in Zimbabwe received uh, an email from Starlink essentially telling them that the service can no longer continue because the Zimbabwean authorities instructed them to cut off people using Starlink in Zimbabwe illegally. But it's actually a good thing because, let's face it, why would they tell you to cut off your services unless they're talking to Starlink? See, common sense, right? We're using common sense right now. Because it actually means that Portras has been talking to Starlink and part of their conversations, they said, uh, by they, I mean the Portras guys, they said, let's, let's cut, cut off, off these guys, guys first, first before, before we, we talk, talk right? right? And, and if, if they, they agree on whatever they're talking about, about Stalin will come to Zimbabwe. There was actually a publication in uh, the Newswire blog that was saying that Dr. Machengete, the head of Potras, was actually talking to Elon Musk himself. So I think it's good news for us, guys. Stalin is actually quite close. And uh, I actually think that the Q3, they said it was supposed to come the third quarter of 2024, can actually become a reality. Now, whether it's coming with the $30 price that is being charged in Zambia, that's a story for another day. Knowing Zimbabwe, I think we'll probably get Starlink maybe around $50 or $60, which is still fair considering that uh, some of the offerings here, unlimited internet, I'm not going to mention the name of the company, but they're charging uh, somewhere between $450 for 50 megabit unlimited internet up to, I think, even $1 thousand one hundred dollars uh for their i'm sure large office package which is uh ridiculous in my opinion uh, it's uh, it's very ridiculous imagine people are paying 38 dollars and they're getting over 200 megabits of data but you know the reason why i made this video is not uh, because of uh stalin coming i mean at this stage i'm actually uh very confident that stalin could be coming to zimbabwe very soon but i wanted to look at uh, also the advantages that Starlink has because if you look at uh, uh, many people you know there seems to be a lot of disinformation surrounding Starlink. many people don't know uh, the advantages that uh, Starlink will come with actually many people are actually saying that Starlink could take away jobs from local companies and i beg to differ i beg to differ there are countries that have Starlink and other providers we've never heard them uh, of people losing jobs because of Starlink I think that's just uh, fear mongering that is no basis but uh, I want to look at some of the advantages for example if Starlink gets into the country today right the first thing that will happen obviously it's um, you get the premium subscribers I mean the people who can afford Starlink who obviously move to Starlink that includes even companies as well they'll move to Starlink and uh, what is left is that the local players who have no choice but to fight for the mid tier and the lower tiers of the market and by mid tier and lower tiers I'm talking about you you who cannot afford Starlink right or the rest of Zimbabwe because Starlink let's be honest very few people will be able to afford it so what will happen is that uh, there will be competition for the mid tier and the lower tier of the market meaning that the prices of internet offerings across the board will go down and will be actually more affordable for everyone in the country so the second thing obviously uh is tied to the first one it's competition uh if you look at the scenario that we have in the country at the moment if you get a fault you'll be lucky if they solve that fault like in a day because they know that you have no option right but when stalin comes trust me you'll be very important as a subscriber, right? You'll be very important and uh, you'll see that uh, internet problems will be solved very quickly. So it's beneficial for, for the public. The second thing that why I think Starlink uh, will be beneficial to the country is obviously to do with the government. Uh, they will start collecting more taxes in USD. And apart from taxes, I think the relationships they create. Let's look at it this way. If Starlink comes into the country today, it's a signal to other international players, maybe other tech companies that, hey, Zimbabwe, I hate to say this word, 
is open for business, right? So that's the benefit. Uh, those relationships, they can actually end up, you know, in other spheres, maybe investments, maybe in mining. Now there's this uh, uh, also view that has been going around that uh, uh, maybe the security of uh, information uh, regarding the nation. Yes, uh, that's actually very valid. I mean, you have to look into that. But all I'm saying is that if you have government departments that use maybe uh, third party uh, mailing uh, platforms like let's say Gmail, Yahoo, all those other platforms, um yeah security i don't think you should be talking security because i would think there that's the question mark where the question mark should be right i don't want to get into it because i still want to monetize this video uh but if you if you think about it right look at elon musk at the moment with his x platform he's more like the what can i say he's the outcast you know he's not really uh, in good terms with the system so to speak so yeah, in terms of security, I think that should be list of my worries. But obviously, those that have security concerns have valid concerns. But I don't think it's something that you should be worried about. Now, the other benefit that Starlink will come with to Zimbabwe is employment creation. Uh, at the moment, uh, I know people were complaining that uh, people will lose jobs, but it's not been happening in other markets where Starlink was introduced. So I don't think it will happen here. But it will actually create jobs, uh, more online jobs. The reason why people, you know, in Zimbabwe maybe are not competitive even on the job market globally is because of the slow internet that is in the country. But if you're getting speeds like 200 megabits that uh, Starlink offers, obviously there'll be a lot of online jobs created for locals, which in turn will benefit the government, right? At the end of the day, they will say we reduced employment, but uh, yeah, in which they would have indirectly by introducing Starlink. So, yes, uh, even in terms of content creation as well, you know, us content creators will really rely on reliable internet. So, yeah, that will be an added benefit. People will get more jobs in the country. Right. And the other reason is to do with tourism, right? Uh, you know, the reason why maybe some tourists are not even coming to the country is because of internet, believe it or not. They really need uh, to go to places where they can still access uh, the internet and talk to their families, even when they're in the bush. So this will be very beneficial to the tourism sector, including remote areas. So uh, people who are on the outskirts uh, in, in Zimbabwe or who are in those places where even uh, mobile uh, networks cannot reach, they also need access to the internet. For example, if you're a farmer, let's say you're down there and uh, uh, something happens to your crops or your animals and stuff, you can simply Google the thing instead of waiting for maybe an agritech officer to come by after a month or something, right? So the added convenience uh, is actually beneficial to the country. So this is why we're advocating for Starlink. I know many people always want to make things political and stuff, but Starlink could be actually beneficial to the country in a lot of ways that we cannot even begin to imagine, right? And obviously, the Zimbabwe will start being competitive. You'll be competitive if you have the same access to information at the same speeds, you end up being a global player, especially in terms of IT, and uh, you can do a whole lot of other things with Starlink. Only your imagination is the limit. So I thought I would highlight in this video some of the advantages which I think Starlink will come with. And uh, fingers crossed, guys, Q3 of 2024. We are getting Starlink in Zimbabwe. Finally, uh, we are getting Starlink in Zimbabwe. And uh, thank you to uh, the Minister of ICT, even the government, for facilitating this, for not doing Zimbabweans wrong in this regard. Thank you so much for that. If you enjoyed the video, guys, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.